In the last video, I tested the RTX 5080 and 5070Ti in a couple of games, and turns out their performance gap isn't as large as their price gap. So, what I'm gonna do in this video is trying to get 5080 performance by overclocking the 5070Ti. I've also overclocked the 5080 for reference, but please note that the main objective here is to compare the OC 5070Ti and the stock 5080. Both GPUs are overclocked by 400MHz in core clock and 1000MHz in memory clock in order to eliminate the memory clock difference between the stock 5080 and 5070Ti. I've also undervolted both GPUs so that they get lower temperatures and won't hit the power limit frequently. That's pretty much the changes I've made to the GPUs. Now, let's begin with the tests. This time, I've included the 3D Mark x by benchmark as well as the 8 games that I've benchmarked in the last video. All the benchmarks are completed with an i7-14700K and 48GB of DDR5 RAM running at 7200MHz CL34. Alright, let's begin with the time spy scores. The OC5070 Ti gets a score of 29,289, while the stock 5080 achieves 31,824. There's an 8.7% difference between them, which is definitely not a small gap. However, when both of them have factory settings, the difference is 15.8%. Almost half the difference is eliminated by simple overclocking. Now, let's see how they actually perform in different games. I'll enable maximum settings and ray tracing, if there is any. In CS2, the OC5070 Ti gets 405 FPS on average in native 1440p, while the 5080 gets 420. The difference shrinks from 10.8% to just 37 and the OC5070 Ti offers a better 1% low as well. In Valorant, the OC5070 Ti achieves 518 FPS, while the 5080 gets 530. The difference drops from 9.5% to 23 Frankly, the difference is basically unnoticeable in these CPU-intensive FPS games. Then, how about GPU-intensive titles? In Assassin's Creed Mirage, the 5070 Ti OC is capable of running 141 FPS in native 1440p, which is about 7.1% behind the stock 5080. It was 9.4% before overclocking. However, when DLSS quality is enabled, it can achieve 158 FPS on average, which is higher than the 5080's 153. In Shadow of Tomb Raider, the 5070 Ti OC can run at 153 FPS, while the stock 5080 runs at 163. The difference is reduced from 23.5% to 6.5. That's a big step forward from factory settings. When DLSS quality is enabled, their gap narrows further to 2.5%. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 5070 Ti OC gets 57 FPS, while the stock 5080 achieves 60 on average in native 1440p. The gap is narrowed from 17.6% to 5.2. Again, that's quite an improvement by simple overclocking. However, the gap between them enlarges when DLSS quality and frame gen are enabled. In F124, the 5070 Ti OC is able to run at 102 FPS on average in native 1440p, which is about 11.8% behind the 5080. Still, much smaller than the 20% gap before overclocking. After enabling the OSS quality, the gap narrows down to around 4.9%, with frame gen it further reduces to just 4%. In Forza Horizon 5, the 5070 Ti OC can run at 165 FPS on average in native 1440p, which is just 2.4% behind the 5080. It was 9% before overclocking. When DLSS quality is enabled, the performance difference is just 1.2%. Although the gap widens to 5.1% with frame gen enabled, the results are still very impressive. In GTA 5 Enhanced, the results blew my mind because the 5070 Ti OC actually overtakes the stock 5080 by 
running at 136 FPS on average in native 1440p. After enabling DLSS quality, the difference is further widened to 9.1%. However, the stock 5080 is 2.2% ahead when 4x frame gen is enabled. Alright, that's all the benchmark results and here's the overall percentage chart of their performance in native 1440p. As you can see, the overclocked 5070 Ti is not far away from the 5080 in most games, except from GTA 5 because it somehow overtook the 5080 by more than 6%. The overall performance jump is excellent considering how it only took me 10 minutes to figure out a stable undervolting and overclocking graph in MSI Afterburner. You might be able to squeeze more performance out of the 5070 Ti if you overclock it to the extreme but for the sake of the GPU's longevity, I wouldn't recommend it. Anyways, getting 95% of the performance of an RTX 5080 for 75% of its price is absolutely crazy. I mean, there wouldn't be much noticeable difference between the two GPUs while gaming. All you have to do is some really basic overclocking. You can spend the 250 bucks you have saved on other PC components or just buy anything you like. The difference between a 5070 Ti and 5080 in gaming is just not worth the upgrade. At least that's the case at MSRP. Of course, you can also overclock the 5080 and it has more headroom for overclocking due to the higher TDP limit. It is always going to be better than the 5070 Ti when it is overclocked, obviously. However, most people would have a budget cap when it comes to upgrading and the $250 you saved can be spent on a better CPU or RAM kit, or absolutely anything else. For example, you can upgrade from a 9600X to a 9800X 3D, or from an IPS monitor to an OLED monitor. You can have more room to upgrade your other components that are as important as your GPU. If you want me to make a tutorial on how to optimize your GPU by undervolting and overclocking, don't be shy to let me know in the comments below. Hope you have found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing, I'll see you soon.